Hmm, magic? What is it? Oh, it could help me to convert to object file. Let me try it. Wait, wait, wait a minute. A console app can do that? Wait, hold a second. Who are you? Hello, fellows. Are you curious about how to turn a Rhino app into a console app? In this video, I'll show you how to do that in step by step. Let's go. To make sure you can make the magics, here's something you need to install. So bear with me. You need to have Rhino, at least version 7. Then you need Visual Studio. Navigate to the link and download Visual Studio. The community version is free and it is good to go. After you install the Visual Studio, you navigate to the workload here and make sure you have checked the checkbox of .NET de uh, Desktop Development. In my Rust C++ into C Sharp video, I introduced my full setup of C++ and C Sharp development environments. You can also check it out. How would you turn a Rhino app into a console app? The magic is called Rhino Insight. It's an open source project by the MacNew company. Quote the official documentation of the Rhino Insight saying that Rhino Insight is an open source project which allows Rhino and Grasshopper to run inside now other 64-bit Windows applications like Revit and AutoCAD. So remember, Rhino inside is a technology. It is not equal to Rhino inside Revit. Please remember that. Simply put, Rhino inside can let you use anything you want from Rhino without actually open the Rhino. And that's it. That's Rhino Insight. I'll make a video to explain how does it work in the future. But for this video, let's just focus on the application level and do it step by step. So let's go. First, create a C Sharp console project and let's go to open Visual Studio. Hit create a new project. Search the console application here and then you select the .NET Framework version of the console app here. Give it a nice name, let's say magic, and then make sure you select the .NET Framework 4.8, which is aligned with the Rhino Inside project. If you saw this page, then you're good to go. There are two ways of installing Rhino Inside. One way is to use NuGet Package Manager. Wow, I don't think it is a convenient way. The other way is to directly edit the c -sharp project file. If you use NuGet package to manage assemblies, please make sure the copy local is false at here. These assemblies are all you need to modify the copy local from true to false. All of this. As I mentioned, I will edit the .c -sharp project file rather than using a NuGet package. Here's how. Right click the c -sharp project and there is a menu pops up. Click the unload project button here. If you click the unloaded c -sharp project and you will see all the content of this c -sharp project here. Add an item group after the default item group of assemblies. This block of code mirrors say, hey Visual Studio, I will use Rhino inside of this project. So please get it right. So I think it is a very elegant and simple way of adding Rhino inside assemblies like this. Now right click the button of the magic file and hit reload project. After reload, hit the build button to make sure everything is okay. Now you should see the Rhino inside assemblies is loaded and everything is okay. Since all the dependencies are set up, let's review the process. How do we convert a file in our daily life? You double click the Rhino 7 or Rhino 8 as executable shortcut and there is something splash uh, pop-ups. After the Rhino is open, you should see a screen like this. The most important thing is that you can assess almost every function at this page. Then you will go to the File tab and open a model. After that, a model pops up and render the shapes and the geometry. And then you hit Save As to other file formats like OBJ or PLY formats. Then you got a chance to be asked where you want to put the file and what's the format of the file. If you select the wavefront OBJ file and there is some option you can select here. The typical wavefront OBJ file export option is like so. Lastly, you hit the save button and that's it. You save and export another file format of the model. With all these in mind, let's do it in code. So right now we are at the Visual Studio. So let's first write out what we need to do in procedure like pseudocode. First of all, let's, let's say the open, open Rhino 
open rhino, open sorry, oops, open rhino. Remember, there is a loading assemblies process, right? Like the splash of the rhino screen. Rhino is open, and we can access, we can access rhino function, rhino's function. And the second step, I would say, open a model in Rhino. So the last step is save the model to way front OBJ. I think that's it. Okay. So first of all, open Rhino loading assemblies. So in here, actually, for Rhino inside, it should be static loaded, static program. The static constructor here means before execute the application, we need to do something sneaky or we need to do something in advance. That is say Rhino inside dot resolver dot initialize. And that's it. This step means open Rhino loading assemblies. Then Rhino is open. We can access Rhino's function. In here, we need to use Rhino core. A Rhino core is saying, you, you can pretend after the Rhino is open, the screen, you are using the Rhino core. So we use the using, and there is some arguments here. So let's ignore that. So what's the arguments here? If you don't know, don't worry. We can copy this one, go to the developer documents. Is the function here, okay, you see that. And then you go to this tab and maybe this function and you will see, okay, I need to go to here. So let's go to here and you navigate here. There is common, common line options. So I think I will use this one. This one is suppress startup splash screen. It's that, that screen you will see normally. So I copy this one, it's no splash. So new stream, no splash. Okay, and in here, we need to open a model in Rhino. So what is open a model in Rhino? If you don't know, don't worry. We can go to the developer API again. You can search open and then you see Rhino doc open. Basically, you need to use this function open Rhino doc. Okay, Rhino doc dot open. Okay, what else do we need? File path, that's we need file path. And what else was already open? Okay, it's open and it returns a Rhino doc. You say Rhino doc. So we need a path to open a model. So I would say before here, we should ask the users to do that. White line, okay. Say maybe I, I can help you convert dot 3dm to dot obj. Give me a Okay, so after that, and we console dot reline, and this path is the file path. So we copy the file path here. Okay, and next step, save the model to away from OBJ. If you don't know the API, no worry. Let's go back to the document. Let's say OBJ. So there is a bunch of this, and let me say file. Okay. And here is that, that one, file obj, okay. There is a bunch of these. I think this one is good, right? So file io, say file io dot. What else do we need? First of all, the file name and meshes and options. What else? Rhino doc and options. Okay, so this option, I think we need it. We give it a destination path and the Rhino document to this obj file and some options and that's it so file path this one is the file path but this one is the 3dm so i can change first of all chain dot 3dm file path to dot obj file path in this case i can use a function file obj path system dot io.path I think there is a change something change extension yes and file path and what's the extension 
is the .obj and that's the file obj path and what else do we need let's let's place here we need documents and this is the document okay and we need file obj write options okay this option is the screenshot we see the output to polygon meshes and other meshes file option so i have write the file write obj option for you it's quite simple the mesh parameters i just use the default one and i don't want to export the materials so i say false and the wavefront obj z axis is different from the rhino space so i set map z to y and that's it so i put the option here but what else it will return the write file result okay result and that's it that's the whole process writing the file success or not we can say your file written result dot to string is there a to string method no i think this is out of scope dot to string okay and that's it that's pretty much all the codes you need before building the project i need to mention one one important thing that is you need to change the configuration from any cpu to 64 bits format and it is super super essential i need to warn you here so let's change to debug and build okay it said build success now let's test a bit so you double click the magic and put the file off here and it says your file written success very good you open the donut and you should see wow that's it congratulations you export an object from a console let's give a summary so this process double click the rhino shortcut and having an open screen is equivalent to using rhino inside to find the old assemblies like rhino common and rhino windows and grasshopper.dll etc using the rhino core like this it's just like you have your rhino open and all the commands and buttons you have available for you the only difference is that the no splash arguments here indicates that this window will be hide in the background but you can assess without using this interface so when you want to open a model you often ask where the model is so here is say i want to take the user's input where the file is when you open the model a rhino document is loaded so the file can be treated as a rhino document then you want to save to another file format just like you click the save as button to like wavefront obj format in order to make it happen you need to specify the extension of the file and also where the file should be located where is the destination you also need to config how detailed your meshes are gonna export and whether the Z axis map to Y and etc. These are all the options you need to config for the OBJ format export. And you click save and this function does it. There are three most common pitfalls you might encounter. The first one is called type initialization exception. This is due to most often you didn't config your build solution to be x64 bit. So I have mentioned in this video so if you don't remember please go and review and you can solve this problem the next one is called dll not file exception this mostly happened because you have these assemblies using the NuGet package manager to load all this format but you forgot to change the copy local from true to false and another better solution is that you change the c -sharp project file like this I have mentioned in the video previously so please check it out the next one and it is the most tricky one is this one access violation exception this one is very tricky and there are lots and lots of scenarios behind this and i encountered one of this is that i built an application with the name called rhino so which is a conflict to the actual real rhino so 
it failed to find the assemblies and load the Rhino dot executable. So the so solution is simple. Just don't name your project same as Rhino and that's it.